Ah uh, yes, there it is guys. You know you want it. You know you want to put this on your quad, your next build. This is the Racer Cube all-in-one F3 SP Racing flight controller OSD. We have an onboard black box with a one gigabyte card on there. We also have a built-in buzzer, which I did not see on some of the other all-in-one flight controllers out there. And it also features something else. The other ones didn't have an onboard built-in FR Sky S-Bus receiver right here uh, on the very top. And it comes with a one gigabyte micro SD card for your black box recording and data recording. But I saw Joshua Bardwell do an uh, overview of this a while back in November, and he didn't actually have one to show off. Uh, maybe he did one later on. I'm not sure on his channel, but I have one right here, so I can pull this apart and show it to you guys. Also show you what comes along with it uh, for your wiring setup. And it does have to have a wire coming from the ESCs down here to the next board up. And then these two boards here and here actually plug in together. So you don't have to do any soldering here to get this going except for soldering on your battery connector cable here and then your ESCs on each side here. So let's go ahead and pull off this top stack and we'll start talking about what's included with this racer cube. So what you're looking at here, this is the bottom, and this is the 4-in-1 20 amp BL Heli ESC setup. It does say little b on the description on GearBest website and on Banggood, but this is updatable with the latest version of BL Heli. That's no problem here, so don't worry about that. Uh, I'm gonna go over a few things that I saw right away out of the box when I set this up on the stack and I looked at it, uh, something looked funny to me. And what looked funny to me was that they had the battery tabs in the very front. Normally we don't have a battery lead coming off the front of the quad, um, kind of different. And most guys like to have it coming out the back. So what you're gonna have to do is make this board turn around in a 180 and have these coming out the back. Uh, just set that up in clean flight or beta flight, whichever you flash on the flight controller and that way your board can uh, be facing the right direction. That will mean that your top part will have the arrows facing the other way once you get this final stack. Now, some people were wondering on Joshua's video that he did if this indeed had another wire coming up from the bottom to that next stack up. Yes, it does. It comes out of that port right there. And this is the wire right here that comes up and it's already pre-soldered right here. So that's pretty cool. You don't have to do any of that. You just have to plug it in here. So they made it pretty easy to get this going. Um, now, next up we have the top part and this is your FR Sky receiver and your black box and your beeper up here. Now, it also has dip switches on here, which I'll show you later, but right away on this one, this one has pins for going into the flight controller in the middle of the stack. There's the receiving ports there, here and here, and the micro pins here on this one, on the very top stack for your FR Sky to get power to. Now this 4-in-1 ESC has traditional tabs coming out the edges, and I've seen that on other ones out there. They're pretty easy to use. I think that the numeric layering, uh, labeling on here is wrong. So when you hook up your motors, they should be correct physically facing this way. So motor one, two, three, and four here, like it would be in clean flight or beta flight. Um, when you do a 180 with the board and switch it around, that's gonna be where I'm wondering if this is gonna be correct. Um, so I haven't wired it up yet, so I don't know. That's gonna be the big question. Um, I saw on the forums that people were saying that the physical layout was correct. Uh, but the, the way they have it labeled is not. So that might take some experimentation, but I will find out and I'll let you know here on the channel. I'll make a comment below. So they did give you the option, if you don't want to use this, you can actually toss this to the side and you can power this from your battery terminal connectors on the flight controller itself here with the positive up top, the negative down here, and you have four other spots for external ESCs. So that's kind of a nice option. And then you wouldn't have to use this extra wire here. You can just come straight in. You can make the stack actually a little bit shorter if you're kind of uh, pressed for space. Also, I'll show you where motor one, motor two, and motor three is in correspondence with this. Uh, and they do say that the numbers on here are wrong. So if you're looking at this from the forward direction, if this is facing this way, and this goes on like this, like I said, this battery terminals are here kind of facing forward. So what I'll probably do is run a wire underneath and just go underneath this whole stack, um, having my battery 
XT60 come out the back. And if we stack this up from the top, looking at it from the very front and the back, motor one is actually physically correct. Motor one is down here, motor two is up here, three and four here corresponding to your tabs. Uh, that's the way it will set up in clean flight or beta flight, and that's actually gonna be correct. Um, so I'm just gonna run my wires underneath this whole stack to make it a little easier for the setup. So I am definitely gonna use the four in one ESC setup on here, cause I wanna give it a shot. I already have this wire attached here. This came pre-soldered. So all I really need to do is take this ESC and get the pins lined up correctly and plug it in. And now I've got power up to the flight controller. Like I said, this is an F3 Evo SP Racing flight controller. So now you're looking at the second level of the stack. This is the SP Racing F3 Evo here. And like I showed you before, we have those connections there for external ESCs if you want. Since you're gonna use that four in one, you don't need to wire anything to these. Um, so don't worry about those. Uh, you have your connector pins here for the next stack up, which is your receiver and your black box setup. Uh, so up here we have, this is the USB port for hooking up to beta flight and clean flight. Over on the right, this is a port, an extra port on this board for hooking directly up to minimum OSD and that's pretty sweet as well. And then down at the very bottom, this one, this little port right here, this is your five volt out and that's for your video transmitter uh, going out for your camera setup. And you also have some extra ports down here that are actually already filled up with wires that are gonna go down to the ESC. We'll look at the bottom and you can see some of these are labeled and some of them are not, but we have negative on this side and positive on that side. But a pretty simple layout, a pretty simple board. You also have forward direction facing here so you know where the top is. It's kind of strange to me that they have the USB ports in the very front. Uh, I don't know if I've ever had any race quad with my USB ports in the front because usually it's hard to access that section of the quad. You usually want to have them on the side, uh, sometimes facing the rear, but never in the front. That's kind of strange to me. So I'm going to have to figure out. It's going to be kind of, I'm going to be torn to, to not do this in a 180. I'll probably have to end up switching this thing all the way around in a 180. Now this very top port, this is for your FPV cam. This goes out to your cam. Uh, so this would be your, your output down here and your video in here. Now, if for some reason you need to reflash this board, the boot pins are down here. They're not actually pins. There are two tabs right here that you're gonna have to bridge uh, with a little bit of solder and then unbridge them when you're done. So that's kind of a drawback of this board. I would like to see maybe a boot button on here somewhere, but there's so much stuff going on on this board, it'd probably be impossible to put a button on this one. But this is where it's located if you're wondering where it's at. Now the next level up doesn't require any soldering as well, so you just have to plug these two pins in, making sure that your forward arrow on this one is correct, uh, lining up with the top stack. And once you have those two facing the correct direction, you can go ahead and put them together, really gently put them together. And now we're ready to talk about the top stack. There's a lot going on here too, and uh, this is a pretty cool setup. You are able to run an external receiver on here. I have heard from other people that this one doesn't have the greatest range, um, and that's kind of a drawback to this setup, but there are more positives to this setup probably than, than uh, negatives. So uh, let's talk about this very top part of the stack on the Racer Cube. This is pretty sweet, like I was saying, I, I think this is pretty awesome that they got all of this on here uh, because some of the other all-in-one flight controllers don't have the built-in receiver and a beeper on there. So that's pretty sweet that right out of the box we're going to get a built-in beeper. That's pretty nice. Uh, also including a, a black box recorder here with a one gigabyte SD card. You can upgrade that to 16 gig if you want uh, and not have to delete your, your data quite as often. So I'm going to put that back in there. And this is an S-Bus or PPM receiver here. It does come set up. The uh, dip switches right here above the receiver, those have to be switched in order to create uh, an S-Bus signal or PPM. So it should come from the factory with S-Bus set up already. 
If it doesn't work, you need to check out the manual, and I'll try to post the manual below for you guys, a link to the manual. Uh, it's a Word document, actually, that you're going to have to download for that. So looking at these dip switches, this one at the very top has to be switched to the left. This one has to be switched to the right. This next one over here to the left, and the bottom one to the right, and that's going to be for S bus. So if yours came PPM setup, you can follow along with that. So hopefully that helps you guys out having your setup with S bus. Because uh, I'm going to run mine on S bus. And we have our beeper up here. Uh, we also have the bind button here for your receiver. The antenna stem coming off here. And the antenna doesn't come on. You have to just pop that on. You just press it with your finger and it snaps right on. What I'm probably going to do is put just a little dab of hot glue over that to kind of secure that antenna because I don't want it flying off. So this is an important scenario. Let me show you how to disable this receiver on here. If you want to add your own external receiver and add some range to this, make it go a little further uh, by using a larger, like an X4R or something on here instead of this little dinky receiver, you can do that by turning this off. And the way you do that is all these dip switches have to be pushed over to the left and that disables PPM or S bus on this and deactivates this receiver. You can also take this antenna port off right here and then you're going to use either UART2 here, UART3 to run out to your receiver. Choose either one and set that up in Betaflight or CleanFlight. You also have the option to run a DSM-X or a DSM-2 port right off of this uh, port connector right there. So that's kind of nice for you Spectrum guys. You're not left out in the cold with this racer cube. Now, optionally, if you guys want to add GPS to this, you can. There is a way to do that. Uh, there's some external ports here, top and bottom here. You also have port for LEDs here. Up top you have extra 5 volt ports up here and you have your RSSI uh, at the very top right here on this stack. Now down bottom here you have A1 and A2 over here and that's also going to be useful in your Tyrannus Plus if you have a Tyrannus Plus. Now last but not least we have our LED indicators on the top and the bottom right here. We have a power indicator right here and the next one down, that's going to be your receiver status. You will have it solid and that's going to be working in normal bind mode. So that's when you're going to have a connection to the receiver and your radio. If it's blinking, you've lost signal. And if it's off, binding is successful during the bind process. So let me take a moment to show you guys what else comes in the box that you get with this little race cube. Okay, so now you're looking at everything that's included in the race cube box. And I got to say for the value, for what you get here, for all the options that we went over, it's pretty decent for 60 or $70 because a couple of years ago, maybe a year ago, the TBS Power Cube was uh, very expensive, one of the most expensive ones out there. And this is going to be actually a little bit smaller. Now, is it as nice as the Power Cube? I, I'm not totally sure about that, um, but it does have a lot of options here. So I would grab one and try it out and see what you think. The nice thing is that is if this ESC goes bad one on here, you can take this off and you can use external ESCs and you can still use this uh, flight controller in the very top part of it. So that's pretty cool. You do have the option not even to use that. So that's pretty decent there. So I'm going to put this on beta flight. Uh, I'm going to get it all tuned up and I'm going to do some flying and test it out. And I'll let you guys know what I think about this a little bit later uh, in the comments down below once I get mine on a quad. Um, but for now, I like what I see. So thanks again for watching the channel, you guys. I'm Justin Davis, and I will see you on the next one.